Our favorite tourist attraction, only 50 kilometers from Kandy, is the world famous Elephant Orphanage at Pinnawala. This unique facility was established in 1975 with four elephants to roam in 22 acres of jungle. It really is a very pretty sight indeed. And, uh, this is the feeding time for the babies. On the right is Emily, and she's only five months old. And on the left, you will uh, very soon see Harry Tat. And he is four months old, always looking for more. And over 20 have been born here since it opened. The Hunaskaria Peaks really is a divine setting here in Kandy. And then you come to the ground itself, nestled in the mountains and the green trees and the clouds fretting across the ground really makes it a very, very pretty picture indeed. And we are here today for the fifth game of this LG Barnes Triangular One Day Series, Sri Lanka versus West Indies. And now we can see the points table. Well, Sri Lankans are safely placed. Ten points after three matches. Uh, they've got no match from both these teams. However, West Indies and Zimbabwe have uh, both got a chance to qualify for the 19th final. Conditions perfect here at the Askeria Stadium for what is only to be the second one day international at this venue. The pitch, it's very, very hard. It's been watered and rolled over the past week or so. It's very flat and uh, very, very firm. Just a little bit of grass. Most of it has been shaved. Just a few cracks here and there. But overall, it looks a very good pitch for batting. A pitch that should not break up or crumble. And I reckon both sides are capable of making 250 plus. Of course, right now, there is a little bit of moisture. That's from the watering during preparation and also from the sweating of the covers, which means that there is every possibility that the captain who wins the toss may insert the opposition in because for about an hour or so, the quicker bowlers should get some movement off this surface. Well, you heard from Rani Labinaike, there's a bit of moisture out there and the captain that wins the toss probably will put the other in. Tony Cozier is out there with the two captains and the match referee, and they're all ready for the toss. Here are the captains, uh, Carl Hooper of the West Indies and Sanat Jayasuriya of Sri Lanka, and the ICC match referee, Mr. Raman Sabaro. Sanat's going to toss, and uh, Carl's going to call. Tails. Tails. Down it comes with no roll. Heads it is. Sanat has won the toss. What do you do? So you'll bowl first this time. Yep. What's the reason for that? I think Candy we got always um, a little bit uh, on the wicket in the early in the morning and a uh, little bit of moisture in the wicket uh, also in the morning in Candy and we thought we were playing with three fast bowlers, uh, we were trying to bowl first. Who are those uh, three? Uh, Soisa mm -hmm. and Tarita Buddhik and Prabhat Nisanka. So not, no Chaminda? Chaminda, we, we gave a Chaminda a rest today. Of course you are through uh, to the final already so that eases the pressure on you. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but uh, we, we can't uh, take things lightly. I think uh, we have to play serious cricket here, and we are playing an international game, and we have to play a positive and serious cricket. Of course, West Indies beat you in the first match. Uh, you have something to prove against them now. That's the thing, yeah. That's, uh, we have to be, be positive, and uh, we have to play, uh, play to our, our plan, and uh, we'll see how it goes. You satisfied how you played in the other matches? Yeah, I think, uh, except uh, for the West Indies game, and we have been playing well, and, uh, uh, and I hope uh, we can continue a good form here. So you're ready for the final? We are all, all ready for the final and we have to finish it off today first. Sanat, thank you very much. All the best. Thanks. Well, Carl, uh, you've got a big weekend ahead of you. Um, you've got to make sure that uh, you don't uh, lose both matches. You've got to try and win both. Well, yeah, more importantly, I think the one tomorrow. But um, today, if we can win the one today, we'll get an extra bonus point. So um, that'll set us up nicely for tomorrow. But uh, I think the crucial game is uh, tomorrow. Not, not saying that today, today's game is not important. You played pretty well the other night to defend that total. Well, yes, but uh, I still think, um, you know, uh, like I said before, we were about 30 or 40 short um, and we were lucky that, you know, towards the end, Colin Moore really came through a really great, uh, good spell for us. Um, but, you know, we want to sort of get everything right, certainly for, for, for tomorrow. 
Um, it'll start in today, tomorrow, and then hopefully the final. You got any changes in the side? Well, yes, we've gone for two quicks. Um, Pedro's got a bit of a slight uh, side strain. Um, we've decided to give Powell a chance, um, so we've linked in the batting. Um, Collins, what, what's his problem? But he's got a bit how of a, bad is it? Well, we hope not too bad to, 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 to keep him out tomorrow, but um, you know, leaving him out today was more or less a precautionary measure uh, to make sure that he's fully fit tomorrow to play. Do you think that will be tactical from here on, that you will strengthen the batting even if he does come back? Well, we're not sure as yet. I think it depends so much on, on, on you know, we obviously play Zimbabwe tomorrow. Um, we've got to sit again tonight to pick that team. Um, I think that the quicks went fairly well uh, against Zimbabwe the last time. So, you know, it's going to be a debate whether we play extra batsman or, or, or go for an extra seaman. The fellas all pumped up for this, um, all ready for it? Yeah, it's a big weekend for us and we realise that um, we've got, you know, uh, uh, we've got to try and salvage something from the series. We've lost in the test series and we want to try and win the one-day competition. Well, Carol, thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Yes, you haven't heard it. So, yeah. Sanat Surya has won the toss and has put West Indies in and that Colin uh, looks to be a very good team. Same team except that um, Ricardo Powell is coming for Pedro Collins. So a batting all rounder coming in for a bowler. I think the West Indies recognize that Sri Lanka's bowling has had them under some problems. They've added the extra batsman and now the West Indies have got to show it all because Sanat Surya has given them the initiative. That's right. Well, this is the Sri Lankan lineup and uh, no Chaminda Vas and Opal Channa is back again. The leg spinner did so well and Charita Budika is the new man in and along with Prabhat Nisanka he'll be bowling uh, with a new ball. Well, we can now go to our commentators. It's going to be Tony Cozia and Ranjit Fernando. Thanks, Ramiz. West Indies opening batsman up there. We're just about ready for the start now. As always, it will be who will uh, start the attack for Sri Lanka. And a wonderful morning here in Kandy. My goodness, weather is, you couldn't get wanted better. And uh, good seeing light for the batsman. But uh, as you've heard, both uh, Ramal Amanaka and also the captain, Sanatraya Surya, say that they expect a little bit of moisture in this pitch. And a little help for the bowlers. Good crowds in already. And it's going to get bigger during the course of the day. So all set in every regard for a good day. Here's the first ball. And off the mark right away, down towards third man, they'll go for four. Didn't want it there, it wasn't a bad ball at all. Thick outside edge along the ground goes for four to get the West Indies going. Very good morning to you, Tony, and uh, good morning all. Yes, this uh, outfield very, very fast. As you can see, it's uh, rolled heavily and uh, flattened. And that delivery from Nuanso is uh, a good one, in fact, for a first delivery. But uh, the batsman being able to try and dig it out, get an outside edge, and it ran through to the boundary for four. Umpires in this game, umpire Lalit Jai Sundara and uh, Garmini Silva would be the other. That'll be four more. That counts as five. Offside wide, leg side wide. Bad start here by Zoysa. This is not the start the Sri Lankans uh, would have wanted to have had. Nuan Zoysa has been wavered on both sides. It's not a good sign. The Sri Lankans going into this game with three seamers. Zoysa Prabhat Nisanka and uh, Charita Buddhika. Well, he didn't mean it that there at all. This has been a, a very mixed over inside edge for four. It's cost 14, but that was a very streaky shot to finish off the first over. Reasonably well. So he's looking for the experience. Picked up six wickets. Five for six and seven against Zimbabwe in Sarja in his debut. So he comes in with a little bit of confidence. Give it him. Gale offering no shot. So Chris Gale's uh, difficult tour of Sri Lanka continues. Offered no shot to the delivery. And uh, umpire Gemini Silva had uh, a consideration. So what a start we've had. 
One really wonders what Gale was thinking about that was coming straight at him and hitting on the knee roll. Didn't do much, so one would have expected it to hit maybe leg stump. And uh, umpire Garmini Silva pondered for a while and uh, then the finger went up. So Gale departs for eight, the West Indies 16 for one. So Brian Lara finds himself coming in earlier in the morning than he sh would have hoped, coming in to replace Chris Gale, who just seemed to be asleep here. In fact, was caught napping. Didn't play a shot at all to that. One really was not sure what he was thinking of. So there was uh, not much height, no stride at all. In fact, he didn't do too much at all. Yeah, that's the open face and gets four down the third man. Solara picking up a boundary. I suppose you'd say it's not uh, altogether convincing, but that's where he meant it in that general direction. Along the ground, you'll see how he played it here. His soft hands, you could see the bottom hand uh, taken off at the point of impact and the ball racing through as if one would see that uh, the third man really couldn't uh, get close enough to cover it. This outfield is very, very fast. Lara over the top, down to extra cover for four, hitting through the line with certainty. Second boundary for him. So he's on that occasion over pitching it, and uh, Lara really has been waiting with hungry eyes to hammer that away, taking the aerial route. But you can't keep Lara quiet all the while, you have to be very precise, hitting it on the up. playing his first game of this triangular and uh, it's uh, fun to watch as well Brian Lara stroking that ball quite beautifully through the onside more typically Brian Lara pitched up the ball coming into him and just easing it more caressing than hitting using the ball as pace the man made on much too wide that's four a high back lift an elegant drive through the onside Looks uh, beautiful when he's driving the ball in that fashion. He was clearly surprised with the extra bounce and length. This is nicely played through the onside. He's not earning hard, Baron Ganga, because he thinks it will go away to the boundary. And it does. Upul Channa giving uh, the chase away. This has been a bad start for the Sri Lankan bowlers. After such a good bouncer, you pitch the ball just about leg stump for the foolish length. Now, sure the Sri Lankans know that Darren Ganga could play that shot very well. So the start has not been good for the Sri Lankans. One there. That's for the stadium. That's beautifully put away. Just the link so early, Brian Lara. That is quality and a hallmark of a class player. Sharika Burika here, much too short, and Brian Lara pulling it away to backward square leg. That would have been very, very well caught had the man at backward square leg taken that. That was fire at the, the Hanson end, Gavini Silva. Inside edge will get Brian Lara two runs. Very good stop by the local hero. Mutsaya Muligran comes from Kandy. As effervescent as ever. And I'm sure that Mutsaya Muligran could run for president of Kandy and win. And with this kind of effort, why not? Look at this. He's running to his left. And does a little bit of football. Man United would probably need him too. And then the return, excellent. 50 up for the West Indies. And 9.3 overs. 50 for one. A little short and wide, and this will uh, run away to the boundary. Charitha Budhika not being able to stop that one. He had to run across to cover the ground. That one was hit quite nicely by Darren Ganga. 
in experience by both the bowler and the fieldsman. A little bit too wide, good pace, but here you can see Budica just going down to the third man boundary. It's wide of him. Instead of just using his feet, he tries to use his hand. There's no way he's going to stop that. A couple of matches still to come. Tomorrow's game is West Indies Zim. No ball and running for a run and had that hit. It would have been curtains for Brian Lara. And Lara is hurt. Oh, I think he's seriously hurt too. Um, both Brian Lara and the fieldsman. Our oh, Brian Lara is seriously hurt. That looks as if his, his shoulder is down. All the fieldsmen are trying to help him out here. Both physiotherapists are making their way out. There was a collision. This was a no-ball ball, and Brian Lara really had to run very, very quickly because there's a danger of being a run out. Marvanata Patu being hit. I, I think his shoulder has been dislocated, and it is very painful. Believe me, it is extremely painful because I've had my shoulder dislocated a couple of times, Croft, and I can tell you it is full of pain. Brian Lara's already had some problems on this tour, a little bit of back problems, has been the premier batsman for the West Indies. 688 runs in a test series and a lot of runs in this one-day series so far. Maybe this run should not have been taken. No, no ball has already been called. Brian Lara's intent on taking the second run was a close run out. And then he and Marvin Atapatu has that collision. Immediately you could see Brian Lara writhing in pain and calling for the physiotherapist. Serious problems to that right hand it seems. It's just running very, very quickly and Marvin Atapatu was also converging on the ball and that dive in a very, very hard collision. You see he's holding that hand and, and in desperate pain. I think it's left hand that's been broken or dislocated. But it'll take time now to recover Brian Lara for sure. They're still uh, having a look at it. Well, that is very unfortunate. Stretch has now been called. So he'll be uh, taken to the hospital straight away, I guess, for an X-ray. And uh, having a close look at what actually happened to his arm. Looks to be in an awful frame of mind and in awful pain. Looking for a run, Mavanata Patu coming in and a big collision, big bang. And there you see that elbow not in control, Brian Lara there. I know, there you Ramis, see I could actually think that that, that hand is broken, maybe a, a protrusion of the bone, but certainly it looks as if that. Um, hand that left hand is broken that's not the hand that is just his batting protector when he bats on the right hand and it's moving that's not the hand it's the left hand that is giving him problems i think it's broken very unfortunate indeed because uh, all these people have come here to watch a brian lara innings with ramnare sirwan now will take the strike in fact, it'll be Darren Ganga. Nine Brunei Sarwan is at the non-striker's end. So no fingers can be pointed at him. Short and pulled away. Outfield is fast. He didn't quite hit it off the middle of the bat, but it will go all the way for four. So too short, really, getting onto it. That's the mistake that these Sri Lankan bowlers have been making. They've been pitching too short. This pitch offering something to the bowlers if it's pitched up. But uh, there you are, short. That's when having uh, plenty of time to swivel onto the back foot. And the bowler Prabhat Nisanka knows that. Very easily played, very well played by uh, Darren Ganga. That's deliberately hit over the top. And it goes down to the boundary for four. That's a good shot by Ganga. He plays that deliberately. We saw him get out to it in the first innings of the first test match of Chaminda Vas. And this time he went over the top. 
width there for Ganga. He made uh, most of it uh, free these arms, just uh, angled the bat as he made contact, which meant uh, the ball went well over the cover fielder. No one down there at deep third man. And four runs to Darren Ganga. So he's going along well. Gone, caught behind. He's walking, not even worrying to wait for the umpire's decision. So Sawan goes for a rare failure. And Bodica picks up his second wicket. He's troubling the batsman with his movement. So Sawan goes and the West Indies lose their second wicket. So Budika strikes again, picked Gale up in his first over, then ball a little too short. And from the last over, he's been pushing the ball up to the batsman. And uh, that time, uh, Sarwan attempted to just uh, push his bat at it. Good delivery because it left him late off the pitch. And a very vital wicket, uh, Sarwan goes. West Indies, 77 for two. Captain comes in with uh, his team just having lost uh, Ramnaresh Sarwan and uh, Brian Lara through injury. Budika has deserved the wicket. Good delivery just outside the off stump. It forced him to play forward. And it moved just a little bit off the pitch. And uh, to get an outside edge. Good to see the batsman walking. Not standing there waiting for the umpire's decision. I think uh, Sarwan has taken his lead from Lara. Chris Gale was the first to go. He's had a horrid tour of what has been an ill-starred tour of Sri Lanka for the West Indies. Short enough and uh, Hooper can get onto it and loft it in the outfield. That'll go for four. Again, uh, one so he's pulling that one short. A responsibility on uh, Soiza because was rested for this game. He didn't bowl a good first spell and now here again Two good deliveries and then the short one. Perhaps the attempted bouncer not really rising. An ideal height for Carl Hooper to take it. Plays it well, rolls his wrist over, but still gets it into the air and in the vacant space. Fast outfield. We are in the highlands, so it's very pretty in the mountains. So the temple of the tooth that attracts a lot of people from all around the world. That's beautifully cut away. It's a very good shot from Carl Hooper. Waited, they have played it in the gap. Excellent execu execution. It was short. And he came down very hard on it, giving it momentum. You could see the way it gathers speed on its way to the boundary, not even allowing the man at sweeper position to cut it. So things happening for West Indies here. One away from his 50. Oh. That'll get him his 50. This is his third 50 of the series. Acknowledged by a very, very knowledgeable crowd indeed. So appreciation from the dressing room and from the crowd. So the crowds uh, have been very sporty. Get some movement off the pitch, which did happen. That's very well played, very delicately played. The ball is racing away, Morley Dharan is after it. Pick up two runs, and a good shot from Hooper. Could have been three. And they've been a lazy run in there by Darren Ganga, but nicely played by Carl Hooper. Just a deaf dab. No slip, no gully. Using the bowler's pace, it goes down to third man, and it should have been three. But Darren um, run had to move all the way from backward point. That's a rank uh, long hop, and that's going to dissect the two fielders. Good shot from Carl Hooper. Waited for it, didn't play too early. Watched the ball all the way to his bat, and hit it very powerfully all along the ground. Much too short. Pitched about leg stump, and Carl Hooper just pulling across the line. But I think the placement here is important. He's got a backward square leg and a mid wicket. <laughs> Big shot for a catch behind, yes. Ganga doesn't wait. He tried to do what uh, Carl Hooper did earlier on in this over. Just tried to work it uh, in the wake and slip area. Only managed to get a touch. 
and Ganga, who's been playing uh, so well, has been dismissed off the last delivery of uh, Russell Arnold's over. Gave away six runs uh, previous to that in the five deliveries. This one very close to stumps, too close to play that uh, glide through the wake and slip area, and Ganga doesn't wait for the umpire signal. He departs. Fine innings from Darren Ganga. A round of applause, a big round of applause from the appreciated crowd. 52 with five boundaries. Sangakara had his gloves in the right place. The ball didn't spin, just skidded through. Faced 84 deliveries for 52. So Marlon Simmons joins the captain. West Indies playing the additional batsman in this match. They've also got Ricardo Powell to come in next. And uh, that's why Marlon Samuels is out here. Darren Ganga trying to work it through that wake and slip area, getting a very faint touch. And uh, Skuma Sangakara makes no mistake with the catch. And that that's it. And he gets to his half century. 50 coming of 76 deliveries. Crowd appreciates. So too does the West Indian dressing room. Very tightly packed the crowd this afternoon. And Carl Hooper, 50, 76 deliveries, three fours. Very important match this, especially for the West Indies. In the air, could he be caught? That will be a good one if he's held. And very nicely taken. That was Mahela Jabodina running in from that uh, mid-wicket position. Very well judged catch. And Samuel departs. Well, Mahela Jayawardena is showing tremendous athleticism here. He's coming in from deep backward square leg. The ball is in the air for a very long time. Hits the toe of the bat. He has to run tremendously. And at the end of it, takes it rather comfortably, which suggests that he's made the ground, he's gotten there, and all he had to do is accept the catch. Good athleticism from Jayawardena. Samuel goes to 10, the West Indies 170 for 4. So Ricardo Powell comes in to bat, his first hit on this tour. Was outfielding in the last game, showed that he's a very good fielder. Joins his captain, Carl Hooper, who's now got to take the innings through to the end. And uh, Samuels didn't really get on top of it. And a good running catch by Jayawardena. He keeps his eyes on the ball and uh, gets his hands into position right at the correct moment. There's uh, Ricardo Powell that uh, other way around. Struck that well and goes for four. Hit that very well as need. Sweet shot employed by Hooper. Gets him uh, a certain boundary. Second time Carl Hooper has put Upal Chandana between square leg and mid wicket. This time a rolling shot, sweep shot. Earlier he had had played one in the air. Okay. Gone, top edge, little paddle around the corner, soft dismissal, power goes. Murley has done him. So he goes for a really a soft dismissal for Powell and he'll be disappointed at that. Yes, it turned out to be a nothing shot in the end. A little bit of extra bounce from Murli Dhan and straight into the safe hands of Sanaja Surya. Ricardo Powell goes for eight in West Indies, 193 for five. Murli Jacobs comes out now, won't face. Murli Dhan got the wicket of uh, Powell off the last ball of the previous over. Top edge. That was always going to be the case when you're not really to the pitch. It was a half sweep, half flick from Ricardo Paul. Not bending his back leg for a traditional sweep, sweep shot straight to uh, Sanajaya Surya. The eyes wide open from Mathai Mulligan, expecting a wicket and getting it. That's in the outfield, out, straight into his left. That's a big wicket for Sri Lanka. Very similar to the way Hooper got out in the previous match against Sri Lanka at a very similar stage. 
takes it straight into the lap of Long Off. He did it against Pure Lutheran in the 40th over on Tuesday when the West Indies won. West Indies were almost the same total. Well, you can now deduct 20 runs easy after that Carl Hooper's dismissal. Straight down the throat of Rupal Chandna, who is an excellent outfielder. And he made no mistake whatsoever. Mistake, however, being committed by Carl Hooper. Very good innings of 72 coming to an end. Yes, it is 205 for six. Neil McGarrow is the new man in now. Right-handed batsman. And, uh, Carl Hooper would be disappointed with his shot. Not good for his uh, own total and not good for the team. Because when you're set and when you're playing in the last 10 overs, you're looking to dominate and uh, really throwing away his position of strength. You can now easily deduct 20 runs from the total because Molyadhan has got a couple of overs left. And Ridley Jacobs is the only all-rounder out there. And the rest tail. Pass the ball right through him. Second ball. Zoom. All over. No clue whatever. 205 now the West Indies with only the fast bowlers to come with. They're in danger here being well short of their 50 overs. The girl goes to this one from Jasuria. Very, very quick indeed. Gone through the defenses and there McGarrow in no position. He was just a little perplexed and confused with the pace on that one. Gone for not. West Indies lose the, another wicket. 205 for seven now. Corey Cullimore comes out now, just the two fast bowlers remaining, Cullimore and Lawson. And the West Indies still with some overs up their sleeve, but they've lost two wickets in quick succession. And, uh, Hooper first of all, and then Neil McGarrow. Absolutely undone by a faster ball from Jayasuriya. Quick, nowhere near it, hits across it. Circle. That beats everyone. Beat Colimo, beat Sangakara. It's racing down to the boundary, maybe to stop just inside. Did have a to get his boot to it? Probably the umpire, the third umpire, will make the decision. End of the over. Gamini Silva is the man asking for this. Now the ball actually touches. The boot doesn't seem to touch the rope, but the boot touched the rope and the ball at the same time. So you get the impression that is going to be four. But that was a chance because the wicket keeper didn't collect it. Very difficult to say from that angle. Certainly the boot and had the ball and the rope touched at the same time. That's the point that Colin Croft mentioned. If the boot has touched the ground together with the ball, then that's the boundary. Yes, it's signaled for buys 213 to 15 for 7 after 46. If you could end up with maybe six runs from the last six deliveries, you would have done well as the bowling team. West Indies will be looking for a boundary. That's a very good delivery from uh, Rasulani, the quicker delivery. Polymo was late as he got onto the back foot, ball going past the outside of his bat and uh, knocking his castle over. So, good thinking, good bowling from Rasulani. Corey Polymo here looking for some turns. Straight ball, quicker, the off stump with this turn. Corey Polymo comprehensively bowled. Not a turn in this. Opening the face of the bat. No contact. Polymore goals. He's bowled for five. The West Indies 229 for eight. Jermaine Lawson, number 11 at the crease. Four deliveries to go in the innings. A very good thick outside edge. He angled the bat, played it well. And that side of the ground, the ball really races away. So they get three runs as Atapatu retrieves. So three very valuable runs for the West Indies. This is uh, Corey Collymore's dismissal playing inside 
the line of that. Not a good shot at all. He acknowledges that. And in the meantime, German Lawson gets off the mark for a nice dab dunk for third one. Hit on the up powerfully, and the ball is racing down towards long off. It's uh, well fielded. That's the substitute, Chamra Silva, who's out there for Charita Bhutika. Two runs to Ridley Jacobs. So Russell Arnold having the task of bowling the final over, something that he wouldn't have done very often, but he's done quite a good job. Possible return catch, but they'll get another two runs as once again Chamber Silva is going to the attack and there's a chance of a run out decision here. Jermaine Lawson was quite slow. Umpire calls for the replay. Well, the first look at this suggests that Jermaine Lawson could be well short of his ground. Now, really, Jacobs hits this back over the bowler's head, a chance of a cut and bowl. And then a nice return here. Jermaine Lawson is struggling. Now the bail is removed. Now he's gone by half a bat. So that's the end of the West Indies innings. The red light will come on. German lost some goals. The crowd celebrates. We have come to see some good cricket. Disappointed by the injury of Brian Lara. West Indies did not get off to a good start. Chris Gale, eight, but Darren Ganga made 52. Really long time for that. And then Brian Lara, that serious injury. The injury now diagnosed as a dislocated left elbow. He's in cast, out of the game. I would suggest out of the tour. Van Resta, one didn't last long. Carl Hooper played well, 72 in 98 deliveries. But only with the Jacobs down at the bottom. He got 25, not out. The tail again folding. The West Indies with just one ball to go in their 50 overs. 235 for nine. The fast bowlers uh, didn't make use of the moisture earlier on on this pitch. Luan Soiza expensive, seven overs for 37. Bhutika, seven overs for 25. He picked up two wickets though. He got the ball to move around off the seam. Nisanka, very expensive. Morley Dharan again, pick of the bowlers. He bowled three spells, 10 overs, two for 32. Kupul Chandana. Had a few good deliveries, but uh, bowled some loose ones as well. So he conceded 41 in eight. Captain Jayasuriya bowled very well, bowling over the wicket today. 10 overs, two for 36. And Arnold picked up a couple of wickets as well, 5.5. He gave away 33 runs. Well, a little uh, chat as it always happens within the openers. How to go about things. Who will take the first strike? I think uh, not coming from a Vishka Guna word, that he'll probably face uh, the first ball of the innings. And for first half an hour in the commentary box, it's going to be Ranil Abhisinghe and Colin Croft. Thank you, Ramiz. So, Avishka Gunavodana, he goes to the non-strikers end. And the captain, Sanat Jayasuriya, he will take strike. So, two left-handers at the crease to open. And he grabbed it with open arms and did well. Revolutionized this uh, one-day opening by scoring runs quickly. He and Ramesh carry with the runner. Open for the first time against India at Delhi during the World Cup. So he's now a seasoned champion as a batsman and now he's as a captain. I go, give him room and he'll just smash you. He was kept quiet for five deliveries, but not this time. Sri Lanka, four without loss. Kuna Wardena, 36 games, so relatively experienced. Fair average for an opening batsman. That's a great shot. Over pitch. And he got his foot out into position. On Rovic. Mid on throwing himself to his right. No chance of stopping it. The ball races for goal. This was actually a very nice shot. The ball was pitched perhaps at about leg stump. But with somebody who doesn't move his feet that much, that's exactly in the arc. So this could go to award. They didn't have to do too much, but hit the ball. He's a six foot four tall man. A lot of power in those shoulders. Once he gets them, they're gone. Oh, 
That's out of the way and it goes through the hands of the fielder. That's Ricardo Powell. That was hit with so much power that the fielder found the ball traveling at great speed and went through his hands. Whenever Sanaja is so here, hits the ball like that, you know it should be four. Ricardo Powell, a little bit of a, a miss. This, this is a mess up. It came straight to him, but it came so quickly that even though it was a little bit of deflection, still got it to the boundary. Carl Hooper now a little bit worried. He's going to bring the fine leg into the 30-yard circle and put the backward point onto the boundary. It's just about time I made some amends to that. That's a big one. That's a big one. It's gone over. He just picked it up from a line that's like a hammer it over the people. Now they're gone delirious. I mean, they're having a good time already. The score is just 18 for no loss. And why not? Look at this shot. This is a very, very good shot. Not a bad ball, just about the right leg. But just pitch on about leg stump, middle and leg. Deposited over that LG Avant sign in the middle of 56. Wonderful timing. Oh, God. <laughs> that was absolutely smashed. That was smashed off the middle of the bat. It was over pitched. Bill Wardena just got his foot into position that time. Just enough room to bring the bat to a full swing of the bat. And he just raced away for four. In the Caribbean, you call this beating the letter off the ball. That was hit with tremendous amount of power. Over pitched outside off stump and spanked. Not a man move. A little bit of movement of the feet here. Just goes to show if you do it regularly what you could be there. That's Hamadou Ramidon. Didn't really get hold of it, but this outfield is fast. It is still a race away for four runs. So. Sarah Jayasu, we are hitting it on the up into that uh, deep mid-on, deep long-on area for four. A little bit of a missed time here by Jayasu. Well bowled by Lawson, just about off stump. And the man at mid-on is a little bit inside the circle. That did drop well outside the circle, but I think that the West Indies better advised to keep their fieldsmen just on the edge of that 30-yard circle. over the top of the bowler's head beautifully hit off the middle of the bat intentional he wanted it to go there and uh, young Lawson has been hit for two consecutive boundaries and what a learning curve is this you have to bowl to one of the world's most aggressive batsmen and when you have pitched an off stump you're going to be spanked there's no long off no long on so that's a safe hit once you get it outside of that circle that's four He could be out. Yes, he is. Brown getting underneath it. Avishka Gunor then checked his stroke. Didn't go through with the drive. Wasn't pitched up enough, in fact, for the drive. And succeeded in uh, giving a catch to the deep mid-off fielder. So Carl Hooper's tactics of getting Lawson to bowl around the wicket has worked. Gunor then departs. Just playing a soft shot and just lobbing it up into the safe hands of Brown at it off. Good more than a departs having just got on to double figures, 10 of 13 deliveries, Sri Lanka 36 for one. So Mavanatha Patu comes to the crease at the fall of Avishka Gunavodana's wicket. Bowling around the wicket, a little bit of extra bounce there, although the ball is pitched up. When a warden is surprised by it, Daryl Brown takes a relatively easy catch at uh, mid-off. Uh, not too much footwork either, but the ball did bounce on him a little bit more than he expected. And from bowling around the wicket, might have gotten into a little bit of that rough. So a good ploy here by the West Indies. Carl Hooper instructing his young fast bowler to go around the wicket. And uh, see that economy rate, 2.9, it speaks a lot.
Ooh, that's a very tight call. But the line is the umpires, as they say. Just to make a correction of that uh, 87 wickets in 15 matches. That's gone away. Just opening the face of the bat, spreading it between that gully and point. Raced away for four for Adepadu. Very neatly played by Adepadu. Waited till the ball came onto him and uh, just played through the line. A lot of control on the top hand, giving the ball good direction. And that's gone. Well bowled, Jermaine Lawson. He's picked up the wicket of Jaya Surya, a vastly experienced international cricketer with a very clever piece of cricket. A bouncer, then followed with one well up to the bat. Jaya Surya, he knows is after him. And that's a very clever piece of bowling by a 20 year old. Very good tactics by the West Indians. In line, coming into Jaya Surya. Jaya Surya looking for runs, but uh, managing to pick Sarwan at mid on. Very good cricket by the West Indians and good bowling by Young Lawson. Lawson departs, or Sanchez will depart. Caught by Sarvan of Lawson for 34. Sri Lanka 52 for 2. Mahela Jayawadna, man of the match in the last match he played. He's got a very good 92. Here's how Jaya Surya went. Good wicket for Young Lawson. Big wicket for the West Indians as well. As uh, Lawson looking to come around the wicket. Again, cramped up Jazz Surya there around the uh, off stump and uh, coming into the left hander. Jazz Surya, a lot of bottom hand there and um, easy catch to Sarwan. So, a very good wicket for the uh, West Indians. Sri Lanka now 52 for 2. That's gone. Gone for six. Well, not the same kind of bouncer we saw from Lawson. And Jaya Wadner is the equal to it. Sorry, it's Adupadu who is equal to it. In position early. And a very good shot indeed. Sailing for six after being pinned down. One got the feeling that Adupadu was expecting it. And uh, Adupadu got nicely inside the line. And... Uh, hammered it away so the timing was good and uh, F, the position too was fine just forward a square that goes for four as well was in the air not as well struck as the previous one but struck well enough to get four but it wasn't too far away from square leg once again, well played by Atapatu, getting inside the line and uh, on that occasion hitting it in front of the wicket, rolling his wrists over, keeping it along the ground, unlike the six he hit in the previous over, using all his experience. Back into the runs. The first 15 over to get a catching position, down the track and hitting over the top. That's gone all the way. Was the confirmation coming from uh, the umpire this is a very good shot because Neil McGuire is actually firing this ball in trying to get it very very flat look at that uses his feet nicely opens the face at the very last moment Randy you would have been proud of that over mid off for six that's a beautiful try not enough of Patu getting into his elements That's a beautiful shot. Cut shot, played in the gap. And that uh, went away like a tracer bullet. Well, this is a shot for the man in form. Just short of a length, wide of off stump, and he keeps it down nicely. But the speed of the shot gets it to the boundary very quickly. Look at that, very quick energy. Five more required by the Sri Lankans. 
around the track and effortlessly lifting it in the air. And he goes to the boundary. And down the track and then meeting the spin half there. Short and wide and uh, Mahila Jayawardne will pick up. Not a boundary, but I'm sure this will be referred to the third umpire for confirmation whether it hit the rope or not. And no consistency here by Neil McGarrell. A couple of straight deliveries and then one well wide. Batsman actually strains to get to it. Oh, just a bit inside the line. And the young fast bowler, Jermaine Lawson. I think his toe could uh, well have been touching the rope there. You see that rope being disturbed a little after he has kicked the ball back. Not here, but now on his next step. There you see that uh, little bit of rope touching the toe. I don't know whether he'll get the benefit of the doubt or not. It's uh, very difficult. And it's uh, not given a boundary and rightly so when Hooper was out in the almost identical fashion in which he was out in uh, the previous match against Sri Lanka. Down the ground, over the top. There's no one out there. And that's a deliberate shot over the top of mid-off. Hooper has the field in. Jayawadra knew that. No risk in that at all. Very good use of the feet by Mahila Jayabodhana. Up to now, they've not been able to deliver the goods. Hurrying for the single, and that's his 50. Put the pressure on the fielder. Back. So Abhi Pahu with a half century. Experienced uh, vice captain of this team. Sri Lanka number one to 143 for two in the 28th over. There are the statistics. Those sixes were both. Uh, Put away one with a hook. But there it is. Turned away. Mahila Chawatna. Maybe one of the young stars in international cricket at the age of 24. Going to hear a lot more of this uh, this player. Such a well-organized batsman. Everything seems right about him. His attitude, his temperament, his style, his technique. And uh, Jawadhan using his glare. That's down the wicket and beautifully struck. Middle of the bat, straight over long one for six. What a super shot. That's a big one. That uh, will bring the crowd to their feet. It's long overdue. Mid on was up in the circle, though that could have uh, prompted Mahila Jayawardena to come down the track and lift the ball in the air through that side. Fantastic timing. One, two, three. Good use of the feet and a bang in the middle of the back. I think the ball has been lost because it hit uh, the tin roof. Let's see if he can get any reverse swing here. An edge and uh, gone for boundary. Good delivery can always uh, pay you rich dividends in one day cricket, and that is exactly what happened to you on that occasion as well. Good delivery by Colimo on that equation. With the bottom hand for the Pathu and uh, taking the outside edge, just eluding the wicket keeper and running down for four. All not uh, lucky for the young man today. In the air and a big six. Mahalaj Jayawardne is playing a gem of an opera. Jayawardne is on a roll here. That was brilliantly hit. Picking it on the half volley and over mid wicket. A huge six. Huge heave and uh, right in the centre of the bat. It's 
no mid-wicket. Now Wigner takes the chance, the ball angling into him. He knew there was no danger in uh, going over the top of short mid-wicket and uh, plays it very well for another boundary. Sri Lankan supporters, of course, enjoying themselves. Pulling across the line here is Mahindra Jaya Wadena. But why not? The wicket is vacant. There's always room in the air. Jaya Warden again taking his guard. He's on 94. Almost sure he's going to just take a single and try to get the next over. And that's handsomely played. There's no fielder down there in the deep now. They've all come up to stop the single. And Jaya Warden finds the gap into the boundary. Four runs, 98 to him. Sri Lanka, 220 for two. 7-4s, two sixes. That is, he punches the air, and they're delighted. So to the team, a wonderful effort from Mahalo Jadota. Only the second century to have been made at the Australia Stadium here in Kenya. I have been to the silver being the first. So this is the landmark. Everybody now celebrates. The tension is off. Mahela Jaya Warden, 100 in just 90 deliveries, 7 fours and 2 sixes. His father. Had plenty of time to play that. Waited for it and timed it to perfection. A great shot from uh, Marganatha Kaku. End of over number 43. Scores are level. Sri Lanka 235 for 2. Sri Lanka in this their last league game of the LG Aban Tri Nation Tournament. They've beaten the West Indies. They made 235 for nine. Congratulations all round. Sri Lanka's zero just 43.1 overs to reach their target. And they have won by eight wickets. The fine innings from Amahila Jayabodhana being congratulated by all the West Indian players reached his century 106 of 94 deliveries and uh, with him Adapatu who came in at the four of the first wicket he made 82 of 119 deliveries that's the final Sri Lankan card Sanatya Isuraya and Awishka Gunawardena going relatively early 52 for two it was but that was the last time the West Indies had any success ending up at 239 for two 6.5 overs left in this game. The West Indies bowling. Yes, the opening bowlers were used by Carl Hooper for 14 overs. They were the only two, although Jaya Surya and Abhishek Gunawardena had a go at them. They came back. 10 overs, 46 runs for Collymore. 10 overs, 2 for 47 for Lawson. McGarrell, the bowler who much was expected of because of uh, the fact that the spinners did well for Sri Lanka. McGarrell, eight overs for 57, very expensive. Carl Hooper tried his off breaks, he was quite accurate. Eight overs for 34. Gail also expensive with his off breaks, three overs for 18. Samuels, even more expensive, four overs for 31. And Ganga just bowled the one delivery, two leg buys and four wides and one no ball. Good bowling from this. Sri Lankan spinners, Budika did get two for 25, he's a medium pass. And then Rasalana and Mutam will run two, two wickets each. Sri Lanka eased the victory, 43.1 overs, 239 for two. Mahele Jaya Wardena, 106, not out. Marvin Atapatu, 82, not out. A wonderful partnership between the two of 187 and 189 balls. 14 points and they have uh, gone into the final comfortably. They'll leave for Colombo tonight, prepare for Wednesday. But tomorrow's game will certainly be a semi-final match. West Indies, four points. They are ahead on run rate. And uh, Zimbabwe, they've also got four points. So a crucial break. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, Colin Croft will be looking forward to a West Indian victory.
player of the day and uh, for playing the innings of the day, Mahila Jayawardne is the man of the match with his 106 not out. And the Taj Productions commentators had no hesitation in giving him the unanimous award. He'll uh, get the award from uh, Mr. Ranjit Udugoda, Senior Branch Manager, Barnes Limited. 500 US dollars. Well, in uh, a walk in the park today, um, how was the experience, Mahila? The wicket played really well. I think uh, the first hour it moved a bit, but after that it settled down pretty well. And it was a flat track it just uh, for the batsmen to settle, get in and then uh, play their shots. A very good partnership between you and Marvin Atapati. You seem to be complementing e each other really well. I mean, that's what we wanted to do. I mean, uh, that's what we lacked in the previous West Indies game. We didn't uh, have any partnerships in the middle order. So that's what we wanted to do. And we managed to do that pretty well today here. And you've got an unusual high grip on your bat. How does it help your batting? <sighs> well, I don't know. I'm, I've been batting like this for some time. And uh, I think it's how I feel comfortable with it. And it helps me to time the ball pretty well. I think that suits my game and I'll stick to that. And your entire family was here. Is that a great support? Or does it get you under pressure? Uh, no, not really. I think they don't usually come to see matches. They usually see at home, but uh, it's something special. So what next for the final then, Mahila? Hopefully continue this uh, consistency. And uh, it's a big game. And whoever plays well will win on that day. So I have to do best. Okay, Mahila, well done, and all the best for the final. Mahila Jayawardne, ladies and gentlemen, for his very fine century. Now we come uh, to the losing captain, and may I invite Carl Hooper to please come uh, here and have a word. Big hand, he's the birthday boy today. Bad luck, Carl. Uh, I guess conditions were just a little difficult first up. Uh, the ball was moving about. Uh, did that set you back a little? Not really. I think um, even though the ball moved a little bit, we were scoring at fives after the first ten. So um, I just think, again, we batted badly towards the last, you know, 10, 15 overs. And your own wicket at that stage, uh, you lost your wicket at 43rd just when you were about to really get going. Was that a miss in the end? Well, yes. Um, I suppose in hindsight it was a, was a bad stroke. But the thing about it, you know, I realized on this track you probably need an excess of 250. Um, and I thought I was a man and I wanted to push on. What about Brian Lara? He had a nasty collision. How is he doing? Well, we don't know as yet. Um, I think he went straight off to the hospital. Um, hopefully, you know, he'll be back with us soon. Um, you know, we go to Pakistan in just over a month's time. So um, we wish him a speedy recovery. Yes, and uh, then tomorrow's game, it's a do-die situation. How, are you up to it? We've got to pick ourselves up. I think we'll be up for it. Um, we want to get to the finals and, and, and compete against the Sri Lankans again. Okay, well, all the best for tomorrow's game, Carl Hooper, and uh, bad luck today. Thank you. Carl Hooper, the West Indies captain. And now to the winning captain, Senator Jayasuriya once again to please come over and receive his award. Award of US 1500. That will be made by Mr. Kirti Gunaratne, chief guest. Well, Sanat, well done today. Uh, just the right time when you're, all the top batsmen are getting into a very good form. Uh, I think yes, especially uh, Marvin and Mahila played really well. Uh, that, that's what we won because we didn't have partnership going on the previous game against the West Indies. I think today uh, we did that. And just one now game away from rounding off a very good home season. You've still got Zimbabwe ahead of you in this series. Has that the best Sri Lanka has ever played under you? I think yes, we have, we have been playing well last one and a half, two years. But I think last series against uh, West Indies, after a long time, we all, the bowlers and the batsmen have been playing really well. And you've lost uh, the final in Sharjah recently by playing outstanding cricket in the league matches. Now you've just got one more game, play good solid cricket. Can that happen again? You never know, but I think um, what we did was in Sharjah, we didn't got enough rounds on the board. I think uh, all the batsmen are in good form uh, this particular series and the West Indies series. I hope that we have to continue our good form in, in the finals. And you don't have any injury problem? Chaminda Vas and others didn't play because you were resting them? No, we don't have any injury problems. Okay, all the best for the final and well done today once again. Thank you, Ramil. Sanat Jasuria, the victorious captain. And that ends our presentation. We'll be back with you tomorrow at 10, at 10 to 10 local time and we'll be uh, live at 10 a.m.